Hey everyone, and uh, I guess leave a comment to tell me if you're actually there or if I'm talking to a center-sized void. Anyway, this week in the Linux and open source news, we have a first hard look at the open source NVIDIA drivers, and they already do look pretty damn good. We also have some more work on HDR and color management, and we have Microsoft basically admitting that you do need Linux to do any sort of real dev work. And we have a lot more things, like the segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxedo. You probably already heard about them if you're a regular watcher of the channel. All you have to know is that it's the only hardware manufacturer that I use these days to run Linux. They make laptops, desktops, and NUCs that ship with Linux pre-installed. They have a big, big range of devices that you can customize with your own keyboard layout, your own logo on the lid, the components you put inside. All the laptops can be opened, repaired, and upgraded. And, well, you know that Linux is going to run on it because that's what they sell. It's laptops and desktops with Linux pre-installed. So you can pick from a selection of distros or you can install your own. Because in their testing, if they encounter any issues, they submit patches upstream so everyone can benefit. So if you need a new computer and you want to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and buy yourself a computer from Tuxedo. So, NVIDIA users should really start getting excited as the open source stack to use these GPUs is moving really fast these days. Faith Ekstrand, who is a developer at Collabora, gave an update on NVK, the open source Vulkan driver for NVIDIA GPUs on Linux, and the progress seems pretty great. They have implemented about 80 Vulkan extensions with almost everything you need for DXVK, so for Linux gaming. They have a new compiler for shaders, which seems really fast, giving 10 to 20% performance boosts in certain titles, and they are now fully Vulkan 1.0 conformant. On top of that, the base upon which NVK relies, which is the Nouveau Kernel driver, now supports the GSP firmware from NVIDIA, meaning the drivers can actually use the GPU correctly now. And so with all of this, it looks like NVK, in its current beta form, hits 40 to 60% of the proprietary driver's performance on a lot of games. Now, it's still simply not as good, but for a first beta release, it's actually not bad. And it means that a bunch of games can actually be played at acceptable frame rates if you have a recent GPU. Apparently, the NVK driver actually beats the proprietary one in one game called A Hat in Time, reaching 210 FPS in their tests compared to 165 for the proprietary driver. And so, as per 2024, the goal is to support Vulkan 1.3 fully, probably around March. And this will mean the driver will be out of beta with everything needed to use it being available with the Linux kernel 6.7, which should release in early 2024. After that, they will focus on performance, obviously, and on adding features to run DirectX 12 games through Proton. And they will try to add support for older architectures as well. And that's really solid work here. And I know 40 to 60% of the performance you could get with the proprietary drivers is just not acceptable right now. But performance will absolutely be a focus later. And so when it reaches 80 or 85 or 90% of the performance, at that point, the trade-off between not having problems related to the proprietary drivers and losing a bit of performance becomes way more acceptable. And I would be surprised if before the end of 2024, we didn't see at least one distro shipping that stack as the default instead of providing the option for the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. Now, as per work on color management and HDR, it looks like things are progressing fast as well. At least on the KDE side. KWIN now has support for ICC color profiles on Wayland, meaning that you can set a profile for each display, and the compositor will adjust the colors as needed. It's still limited to sRGB, but the color management protocol needed to support more color spaces is moving along, and System76 already has developed a Vulkan layer that uses it. For HDR, Plasma 6 lets you enable it in the display settings, and it also lets you set the brightness for SDR content, as well as their color intensity, to avoid things looking too dull compared to HDR content. 
Plasma 6 also ships with an experimental implementation of full-screen HDR support, notably for playing games. It does require you to jump through a few hoops, but it does work with a bunch of games. For the next steps, the goal is to simplify things so you don't have to turn to the command line and installing some unstable stuff from Git, and also to implement HDR screenshots and screen recordings. And that's pretty stellar work as well. I have an ultra-wide HDR display from LG and I was just not able to take advantage of the HDR support until now. And so in 2024, I absolutely will be, which is always a big plus. Now it looks like Microsoft knows that Linux is the best option for most dev work as they just released their new AI Studio tool for developers. And this thing actually installs Linux on top of Windows to work. This tool requires at least Ubuntu 18.04 and it runs locally on Linux using the Windows subsystem for Linux. And funnily enough, it only works with Nvidia GPUs for now while the tool is in beta. So when you install this thing, you're actually using Linux, not Windows, even though it seems to be packaged as a VS Code extension, which definitely has a Windows version. Now what this tool does is basically just compiling a bunch of AI related tools linked to Azure or Hugging Face to download and use various models from these catalogs. Now it is pretty funny to see that even Microsoft cannot bring themselves to develop tools for their OS natively because why would you when Linux is objectively a much better choice for a lot of dev work? Now KDE Plasma 6 got its second beta release, which includes all the bug fixes for a lot of stuff people have reported during the alpha and the first beta testing phases. At this point, Plasma 6 is still planned for the end of February, which is cool as it's been a while since we got a new major Plasma update. It's still obviously not fully stable, so use it at your own risk, and it includes updates to all the default apps and the frameworks and the desktop. If you feel it's mature enough for you to try it, you can give it a shot using KDE Neon Unstable. And there's also a new KDE theme being worked on called Breeze. Yes, Breeze just like the current Breeze theme, but written with its French spelling, B-R-I-S-E. For now, it's not much of a departure from the current KDE theme, although it does increase the border radius a bit to have more rounded buttons and frames with a configuration option being available. Plus, there are a few improvements in search fields, a new tab style that removes the colored accent from the active tab, and a new style for highlighted menu entries that remove the more opaque border around it. It also unifies the height of all controls. For now, it's not very different to the existing Breeze theme and it will be co-installable, so you will be able to use both. It's meant as a sort of testing ground for other changes before merging them into the default Breeze theme if they're considered good enough. Now, I would love to see another take on Breeze in the future. It's serviceable enough in terms of UX, it's not bad at all, but in terms of look, and I know that's subjective, it trails behind Libet Vita. Libet Vita might be too big and too padded, but looks wise, it's just way, way more modern and nicer looking than the Breeze theme for KD. So at some point, I would love to see a revamp, not copying Libet Vita, they can do their own thing, but something more modern. They're already working on that in terms of the icon theme. So hopefully the default app theme will also see a bit of change. Now, if you use an Apple Silicon Mac and you want to run Linux on it, but Azahi Linux is a bit too bleeding edge for you, you'll be happy to know that Fedora Azahi 39 is now out. It's basically Fedora, but with all the drivers and hardware work done by the Azahi team to support recent Macs. It offers KDE Plasma as the default with a GNOME variant available, and they both default to Wayland, as the Azahi team definitely does not seem to have plans to support a pure X11 session. It includes the recent OpenGL conformance driver and adds high quality audio support, something that Azahi fixed recently as well. Now, obviously it is not perfect yet as there's no Vulkan driver yet and certain features just don't work like external displays through USB-C or Thunderbolt or USB 4 or the onboard microphones or Touch ID, but the camera and speakers now work, which is cool and you can still output to a display using HDMI if your Mac has that. 
I reviewed Azahi Linux a few months ago and I found it okay, but it was lacking too much of the hardware support, but with the camera and the speakers now being supported, maybe it's more decent. So maybe I'll take a look at Fedora Azahi. Let me know in the comments if you would like that. Now, if you're about the same age as me, you probably know about Flipboard. It was all the rage back when smartphones began getting popular. And it looks like they want to pivot to support the Fediverse, this nice aggregate of various social networks and apps, including Mastodon, PixelFed, or Peertube. Flipboard will actually replace all of its social backend with ActivityPub, the underlying standard that makes social networks talk to each other. This means you'll be able to add posts from various publications and individuals, podcasts, videos, and more, all in one single feed, much like an RSS feed reader would do, but with a nicer user interface. It will also let you comment on various posts, and these comments will show up under the relevant posts on Mastodon, on Threads, and other apps that support or will support ActivityPub. So this should be fully enabled in April, which is pretty neat, and they're apparently working in a considerate way with moderation being thought of and how they will avoid overwhelming smaller instances as well. Now, if you add that to Meta's Threads app that is also starting to test their ActivityPub implementation, you end up having a nice path towards a more open internet, at least in terms of social networks. You won't be siloed anymore into a specific app and you will be able to interact with more people no matter the platform. Now, personally, I've gone all in with the Fediverse. I'm on Mastodon, on PixelFed, all my videos are on Peertube. I also have my own Linux and open source news podcast, the audio version of this show hosted through Castopod. I love it. It's the future of the open internet for social networks, and I hope more companies will join in so everyone can actually interact with everyone else, no matter the app or the service they decided to use. And let's finish this with the gaming news. First, we have a new release of Proton Experimental, which adds a little hack to allow the Steam overlay to be displayed when using easy anti-cheat from the Epic online services. This version also adds HDR support for Devil May Cry 5 and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, on top of already supporting the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes, RE7, RE Village, plus Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Hogwarts Legacy, and more. It also fixes a bunch of issues with various games as always. And honestly, at that point, I would set Proton Experimental as the default for all the games you want to play on Linux. And if you notice that there are some problems, just put the version back to the latest stable one and you'll probably fix the issue. But Experimental has so many fixes and improvements that generally it's worth it using this instead of the stable version. And we also got a new version of VKD3D Proton, the DirectX 12 compatibility layer, which implements a bunch of fixes again, notably for NVIDIA GPUs and also for ray tracing, plus much better support for Microsoft's implementation of anti-aliasing in DirectX, which should improve performance all around and give better visual results. So, as always, gaming on Linux just progresses forward bit by bit, gaining market share bit by bit. It's nice, it's a good time to be a Linux gamer. And this will conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, or to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, there's always that thumbs down button and the comment section to let me know why I suck. And if you really enjoyed the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description of the video. Don't hesitate to check them out uh, to actually help me make more of these videos. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!